In this video, we'll explore how to construct uh, quadratic functions using sliders. Now, often we talk about quadratic functions either in vertex form or in the general form. So we're going to look and see how does GeoGebra interact with these as we construct it. We're going to build the sliders for the vertex form because uh, it's much simpler to follow and it creates an intuitive, interesting way of how these two connect then. So first thing I need are my sliders for A, H, and K, my three coefficients. So I'm going to name them as such. You can change your minimum and maximum values to whatever you want. I'm going to make mine negative 10 to 10 with an increment of 1 tenth. Now I need the H and the K. So H from negative 10 to 10. And I don't like where it put it, so again I right click. I want to unfix the object to shift it over. I right click again and fix it back. And then I need a third one. And we'll call this K. Negative 10 to 10. Again, right click, unfix it, click and drag to move it, right click to fix it back. So I've got my three sliders here. Now what I want to do is construct the function. So f of x equals, and I'm going to say a for the a slider, parentheses, x minus the h slider, and then I can go over caret key for the squared term plus k. And I can see here it constructed, I'll click and drag that so it's a little bit larger there, it constructed my function. So now I can watch the A change the dilation. I can see how H does a horizontal translation and how K does the vertical translation. Now one thing to pay attention is that it is really nice in this case that the way it's constructed as a function, the plus and minus are changing correctly here. So that is a nice little feature for our students. Now say you want to say, well, what is the standard form or the general form that matches up? If I use the y equals instead of the function notation, so if I do y equals and I enter the exact same um, vertex form, a x minus h quantity squared plus k, watch, it automatically creates the, the corresponding general form of my function which can be really nice for students as they're starting to learn about these two different forms with the signs correctly changing as it moves forward. And that's how you construct the dynamic quadratic function.